guys so this will be the build guide for the assassin cyclone and this is the coc ice spear okay so i understand some of you guys prefer the ice spear version some of you prefer the ice nova version um that is why there are two variants but they are still both assassin and they are somewhat similar all right from the low mid to high budget the pob is very similar they are just some slight changes especially on the skill gem and the uh, medium cluster jewels so i'm just going to go a quick one on uh explaining the pob and before that i just want to say um because there are a lot of changes in 3.19 in terms of uh defensive layers the defenses and also offensive uh basically the survivability and the dps have dropped a little okay do not expect it to perform as well but i, I will say maybe just about five to ten percent lesser okay and um before i begin i want to say um what is the difference between ice spear and ice nova from a high level perspective right per from a high level perspective okay um basically ice nova is a mapper ice spear is a bosser all right um ice nova is not really good at bossing and ice spear is not really good at mapping why um i'm pretty sure you know ice nova is like one whole 360 degrees aoe right so it clears very well throughout the map on your screen and it pops on your force boat that's why it is a mapper it's a fantastic mapper and why ice spear is not a fantastic mapper is because you only shoot out the ice spears in front of you in a small cone like this okay in a small cone that is why um it doesn't really clear your whole entire surrounding but it does immensely high amount of single target damage and that is why i say ice spear is more towards um bossing whereas ice nova is more towards mapping okay but still both of them are able to do whatever that is uh, not favorable for them vice versa um, I'm not saying it is not doable, it is still doable, but just that they are more favorable in those positions. Okay, and some of you might be asking, uh, what should I use to level up this or can I leak start with this? The answer is no, you cannot leak start with this, but you can leak start with something else and then you do the chaos recipe and transit into the low budget ice spear all right so um which are the builds um i will be posting my leak starter all right but for now if you want the pub they are over here okay so you can leak start um with three different builds one is creeping frost okay basically these three one is creeping frost uh the other one is spark and the last one is storm brand okay but just take note that um for storm brand you basically need a friend that plays witch templar or scion or skion or scion i don't know how to pronounce okay whatever yes it's because you are not accessible to storm brand until you reach um the library in actually all right otherwise storm brand is easily accessible straight at level 12 right but because assassin do not have storm brand so no choice and otherwise, I would say the best leak starter for this is Spark. Okay, Spark. Um, for those of you that, you know, you die, die, you you just want to play a cold damage build, right? Then just go for Creeping Frost, okay? Don't ask me why, but um, I, I would suggest that among all of them, I will rank Spark as number one, Stormbrand as number two, and Creeping Frost as number three, okay? I don't really like Creeping Frost. I, um, I, I can't really imagine like myself playing creeping frost for leak start i've tested it and i don't really like it myself but yeah if you really want to play a uh, cold damage and you need something that creates creeping frost is the way to go okay so with that said um the pobs are all already pasted here for the low mid and high budget okay just to take a look at them um if there's any update i will immediately update them and then just uh look at the dates updated okay uh oh yes sorry so for now i'll paste this so uh for now yeah the ice and ice nova is updated and yep let's begin with our low budget variant all right sorry before i begin the low budget variant i just want to give a quick scan through again on this 
debate uh, before people start asking me what's the difference between assassin occultist versus inquisitor i have said this many 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 times super a lot of times countless times and this is just a high level overview of what is the difference between the three of them all right so in short occultist is going to give you more damage plus es it has double curse assassin is just fast it is very easy to generate power charges more crit more multiplier um, Inquisitor basically just gives you Consecrated Ground perks and it just completely ignore Elemental Resist which is really really good. Okay, so um, there is no good, there is no the best among all of them is, it really depends on what you actually want. Okay, that's what I can tell you. All of them have their good parts of it and all of them have their bad parts of it. Right, so uh, for me, I like it fast. I want to go fast. And I want to scale my crit easier, so like I, I don't have to bother or get a headache over how to, uh, you know, scale my crit and stuff. That's why I go for the assassin. It's much more simple. It's much more straightforward. All right, this is the low budget variant. Okay, um, I'm gonna use level eighty as the benchmark. Um, because it is a low budget. Um, technically you should reach until level ninety. Okay, so. Um, good luck with that, but uh, I'll just use level 80 as the benchmark. Okay, as uh, there are different trees, uh, minimum is level 68 because that is the bare minimum you can start playing this build. Uh, Cosprey is at level 68, alright, okay? so no choice. And then you have a level 80, level 90, and a level 95 tree. Okay, and uh, yeah, just take a look at the POB yourself. For the skill gems, um, it is basically the same as Ice Nova, just that what we're going to change here is Ice Nova to Ice Spear. Alright, so this will be Cyclone, Cast on Crit, Ice Spear, Inspiration, Increased Critical Strikes. We have to maintain this Increased Critical Strikes and Greater Multiple Projectile. Alright, this is like the no-brainer for Ice Spear. The more projectiles, the more you are like going to shotgun your, your monsters, okay? Uh, yeah, of course, in front of you. And then, uh, same as the low budget, um, we are going to wield double cosprey. Okay, um, but it is slightly different this round. So, uh, on the first one, we are going to put Creeping Frost, Bone Chill, and Unbound Ailment. Okay, this is going to come together. The second one, we are going to put uh, Frost Bomb, Summon Ice Golem, and Calling Strike. So, this is the same. As the ice nova, just that the first one is different. So some of you might wonder, like, why creeping frost? Okay. Um. Yes, I did mention that you put in like the previous video in three point one a that you can use anything, like you literally can use either freezing pulse or whatever. Uh. Also, please do change the pob as and when you need. But the real reason why you actually want to use creeping, uh, as in creeping frost, is because of the chilling areas that you create. Okay. So you can see curse enemies on your chilling areas have 15% increased effect. Okay, and then you have to take, uh, is your enemy in chilling area? Yes. You can see your DPS is going to shoot up by about 200k damage. Okay. So yes, that is provided you take this. And I think that Creeping Frost gives you kind of like a better, uh, better defensive mechanics. When they are chill, they won't approach you much faster and you are slightly safer. Okay, um, what else, what else, um, back to skills, Aura, we're going to use the same Precision, Hatred, Determination, Defiance banner, and this will be your Vortex Hex Touch. Same as the Ice Nova, I'm going to repeat again, why we are going to use Vortex Hex Touch uh, back to the old days, instead of the Mark on Heat, the reason is because of Arch Nemesis mods. All right. Ever since 3.1a, I've been playing a lot, and the most encountered problem I have is I cannot kill rare monsters as fast as before. Okay, and one thing I noticed is purely because of the Arch Nemesis modifier. When you meet those rare monsters that has the Arch Nemesis modifier that you know adds elemental resistance, cold resistance, reduced cold damage, and stuff like that you are going to have a lot of problem dealing with it. And that was the problem with the previous COC build. Like even though the damage is there, I do not have enough um, the, the cold 
penetration uh, to resistance and I cannot kill them very fast, alright? So, like, take for example, if I see a rare monsters that have no uh, Arch Nemesis mod that gives them increased resistance, I can kill them in like less than 5 seconds or maybe even 3 seconds or so, alright? But if I just see anyone, right, like maybe they Frost Weaver or something like that that gives them uh, elemental resistance or core resistance, I can take like 10 to 20 seconds or even longer just to try and kill them, okay? And because the longer you stay there, the longer you are not going to last over there, okay? Because your flash charges will like eventually run out and you're going to take longer to kill them. So your DPS kind of like lowers lower down the longer you stay to try and kill them and not to mention that their damage actually might hurt quite a bit if you stay very long all right so that is why we are going back to the vortex hex touch but this round double curse frostbite elemental weakness we just want to kill all of the annoying rare and magic monsters that have all of these uh, modifiers that increases cold or elemental defenses all right Movement skill, we are still going back to the Frost Bling Arcane Surge and then cast when damage taken, Molten Shell at level 10 maximum because we are going to have a lot of armor, right? 22k, so Molten Shell basically is going to give us roughly about, um, so 10% is about 2k, so yeah, 20% is about 4k. Um, I will say, okay, not exactly, but about 4k uh, effective health, alright, uh, additional health. Okay, and then next is the items for the items um, cosplay malaise. Remember your first cosplay on this. Um, I will recommend you to keep it at twelve percent. Okay, right? Why is this so? Is because the medium budget and the high budget build utilizes a cosplay with twelve percent attack speed. Okay, just take note of that. Um, for your second cosplay, you can just use 14% if you can find, but otherwise just use anything. Uh, Devoto's Devotion for our dex, increased attack and the uh, sweet little 20% increased movement speed plus chaos resistance. Okay, Body armor, goes to go for Tabula Rasa. Um, if you manage to get your hands on a 6 sling with the correct socket colors and life, just equip it, you are going to have a lot more life. Otherwise, you see we are actually not at the 4k HP cap, um, partly because all of my rare items over here is just tier 3 life, you can get more, um, this is not exactly accurate, you can see I already have 141% increased life from the tree, that is actually a lot, okay, just take note of that, and then the boots just go for H, uh, life and resist, then benchmark, uh, benchcraft, sorry, benchcraft, movement speed plus uh, cannot be chilled. Alright, uh, amulet, go for the C3 amulet because we need the attributes for strength and dex. And then annoying graceful assault. Uh, graceful assault basically gives us onslaught over here. Alright, uh, onslaught uh, on Q is very cheap. So violet, violet, black, I'm pretty sure you can afford it. And probably 5 chaos or so. Right? And then uh, two rings. Alright, the rings has to be a resistance ring. And both of them, uh, the first one is basically fulfilling your remaining attributes, which is dex in my case, and then life, and then just uh, benchcraft non-challenging skills have minus 7 to total mana cost. And for the other ring, just go for life and resist, and then benchcraft the non-challenging skills have minus 7. Alright, belt go for the heavy belt, we want the strength, and then just life and double resist. The prefix is a bonus, you don't necessarily need to have it. Okay, Flask, we're going to go for Quicksilver, Granite, and Diamond, uh, Sulfur, and the last one is Divine uh, Life, okay, so uh, you can choose any of the Life Flask, but what we want, really want here is the Immunity to Bleeding and Corrupted Blood, which we do, don't really have access to in the early games, right, uh, the Anti-Corrupted Blood Jewel. Um, for the Sulfur Flask, you can have any suffix on this, but I, I will recommend the Increased Attack Speed because... When we are dual welding cosplay, right? Um, basically, the break points of the COC of the APS is actually 12.12. So, the more attack speed you have, the better it is for this build. Your DPS is going to go much higher. Okay. Um, dual wise, we're going to have one Conquest efficiency and another Conquest efficiency, but the replica version. 
Okay, um, the mana cost is, you can see the unreserved mana is only 67, right? Um, I can tell you it's more than enough. Why? Uh, this is the same demonstration as the uh, Ice Nova. Alright, you can see my Ice Spear, each of them only cost 6 mana. Okay, each of them only cost 6 mana, alright. So, um, probably you're gonna heal up very fast. Right, plus you can see my Cyclone has a 157 mana leech per second. That is really a lot. Um, if we go to the first Cosprey trigger, our Creeping Frost only costs 1 mana. Next is our Summon Ice Golem, it's going to cost 20 mana. This is probably the most costly one. Okay, but uh, honestly, I don't think it's a problem. And then Frost Bomb is going to be free. Alright. And then your Vortex is going to be free. Your Frost Blink is also going to be free. And your Molten Shell on the cast and damage taken is also going to be free. So you have only 3 skills that you're going to trigger. One is um, Cyclone. 4, sorry. Cyclone if you want to count it. And then Ice Spear. Uh, total 8. I'm not sure. I, I don't think I should include Cyclone because Cyclone is always constantly spinning. So let's just count Ice Spear. 6. Um, next is Creeping Frost, so 1 mana, 7, alright, 7, and then after that it will be Summon Ice Golem which is 28, so total of 35 mana only for each prog, okay, that's why you don't really need a lot of mana, okay, uh, so yes, for the nodes, uh, just take note when you are mapping or progressing your map, uh, Atlas, just take note that you cannot do this mods. Okay, uh, I wouldn't say cannot. Okay, so cannot is this. You cannot leech from monster. This is extremely important, all right? No matter what, if you see this, please do not do it. If it's corrupted, just throw it away or put it in your stash or give your other friends to or, you know, okay, you can come to my Discord and trade for the same map uh, to see if any other people can do them. Right, uh, I'm pretty sure they will be glad to trade. Otherwise, this is not possible, okay? For the rest, it is still possible, but it is very dangerous. Just take note of them. Okay, and this is basically your low budget, Ice Spear. Alright, okay, so this is what I'm going to address on. Um, the important things to take note, um, basically focusing on how, I, how and where I get my attack speed from and how much cooldown recovery rate do you need and this is divided into the three variants the low the mid and the high budget so for now since we are on the low budget i'm going to show you where it is um, before you actually come over and ask me where i actually get my attack speed to reach the big point okay so uh we are having 10.75 we need a total of 80 percent increased attack speed uh, like I mentioned, because we are dual welding, the break point is, the best break point is about 12.12 and if you can get as near to there, then it is really really good. Alright, you can have more attack speed from your rings, from your gloves, they are all very good. It's going to increase your DPS and your trigger rate a lot. Okay, um, first of all, 12% on our first cost speed, like I mentioned. The mid and high budget is going to use 12%, so we want to maintain at least one of the cost speed at 12% and then the second one at 14% or anything because eventually you're going to sell it 16% on your Devoto's Devotion alright, 13% um, on Flush, you can get as high as you want um, it's much better 25% on the skill tree, just have a look at the POB if you don't know where it is, you can just mouse over to the name and basically they'll show you where it is Alright, 26% from Onslaught. So some of you might ask, isn't Onslaught like 20%? Why is it 26%? So the reason is very simple. Um, Graceful Assault basically has 30% increased Onslaught effect. And that's why that's why over here we have 26%. Okay. Um, how much cooldown recovery rate do you need? Guys, this is a low budget. We don't go any cooldown recovery rate. Alright, it is too far-fetched for this build already so low budget no cooldown recovery rate just play it uh very simple very straightforward okay next up will be the mid budget version um this is the skill tree at level 90 i'm going to use 90 as the benchmark uh you can see i have various other various other levels of the skill tree 68 80 95 100 most likely at the peak you will be at level 95 
Okay, so um, have fun with this and I'm not going to go through the, P the skill tree. You can just browse it through yourself. Um, let's go over to the skill sets. So there is nothing changed for the skill sets other than having quality on it. Okay, so at this point, I expect you to have uh, quality on them so that it can perform much better. Um, for your cosplay, this is going to change. So we are now going to use Creeping Frost and Frost Bomb and then Arcane Surge. Alright, so Arcane Surge is going to be here. Why is it at level 1? Because um, you can see my Creeping Frost is actually only at 3 mana. So basically, when you proc Creeping Frost 5 times, you're going to trigger 1 Arcane Surge. Okay, uh, also inclusive for Frost Bomb, but Frost Bomb is going to actually cost 0 mana. So uh, I'm not going to bother right there. And this time, um, we are going to have Aura and this will be going to, this is going to be on our Prism Guardian. We're going to go low life this time, that's why Prism Guardian is here, there is some changes to it. Hatred is no longer there, so because of the changes to the life reservation efficiency, uh, we can no longer put 350% skill Auras onto our Prism Guardian. That's a bit sad, but I would say it doesn't really matter a lot. Okay, so yes, Vow Discipline. Vow Discipline is going to be our new inclu uh, inclusion. Hatred is going to come out. Um, and yeah, Determination, Discipline, and Purity of Elements. So I kind of like value Determination and Purity of Elements much higher than Hatred um, because I would prefer... Uh, more survivability and easier, easier scaling of the um, resistance rather than having just slightly a little bit more damage okay I can tell you the damage probably if you were to put on uh, hatred in instead of let's say example determination it's gonna be about like 1% more only that's really very little however if you're gonna put determination in it's gonna give you um, okay let's say you see this is level 22 right I have 23,000 armor and 84% physical damage reduction. I'm going to minus 2 level, okay? You can see, right, I'm going to have less armor and lesser 1% uh, physical damage reduction, lesser. Okay, I to me, I feel this is really important because that 1% might probably help you to prevent yourself from getting one hit by various monsters, okay? So that's my explanation right there. Um, the second falling is going to be our second sets of aura, which is Defiance Banner, Summon Skitter Bots, Bone Chill, uh, Link to Skitter Bots, and then Hatred. Hatred is now going to come over to here. Our Vortex Debuff is going to be the same, no difference, uh, just that you can have some of them with the quality. Uh, cast when damage taken, so uh, same uh, with Molten Shell. Movement skill now we're just gonna be singly handled by Frost Blink. There is no link to it. Um, position is gonna be on the boots. This is our third set of aura on the boots. Okay, on the boots. And then the last aura is Hero of Ice. Hero of Ice is gonna be on one of our unset ring, which I will explain later. Okay. Um oh wait, why is it ice no far? My bad. Okay, I'm gonna change this. Sorry. Okay, and our items, uh, like I mentioned, cost free, we're going to have it at 12% increased attack speed. This is going to be used in the high budget as well. Uh, weapon 2 is going to be our Prism Guardian. With this, we can go low life. I would suggest just to get 1 at 30 dexterity because um, this is the only line of modifier you can change on the Prism Guardian. All right, Even though Divine Ops are expensive, I think just for this shield it should be okay because like i mentioned this is the only line of thing that you can change all right it might be a bit more expensive because like i mentioned for the change in divine ops um the rarity is going to shoot up really high we are not going to use that we're just going to buy one with 30 decks okay um helmet helmet is very straightforward just get one with es the chaos resistance is a bonus and then benchcraft strength and dex Body armor, we're going to go Chevron's Wrapping because obviously we are going low life, so we need this. Gloves is just ES and then Benchcraft Strength and Dex again. Um, for here, right, I will recommend you 
to put in the Eater of World modifier whereby projectiles pierce an additional target, okay? So many of you have also asked me, doesn't Ice Pier actually need a lot of pierce? Like I see from PoE Ninja that, um, you know, everybody ha is actually using the, um, what is it? Is it the Divergent one? Or is it Anomalous? Okay, it's Anomalous, all right. Anomalous that pe projectiles pierce to additional target. Guys, I can tell you the pierce is really not needed. <laughs> all right. So this pierce only comes very effectively when you have a pack of, let's say, magic mobs or rare monsters that you are unable to deal with, all right. Even though if you don't have pierce, right, you still can kill them super fast because your single target damage is so high that you're just going to eliminate them one by one, all right. So once the first one dead and then second one, you're just going to shotgun the next one and then it just goes on and goes on and goes on. So technically the pierce is really, really not important, especially when you fight boss, the pierce is pretty useless, right? So yes, I would suggest, um, honestly, in my own honest opinion, you don't really need the pierce, okay? Your damage is already so high. When you see a pack of white mobs in front, it's just going to obliterate them, all of them, because they are probably going to just get one hit. Okay, um, boots, we're going for the ES and resist boost and then just uh, benchcraft, movement speed and chance to gain onslaught for 4 seconds on Q. Uh, why onslaught, why no more chew is because we are immune to chew now so we don't need that. Amulet, presence of Chayula, just annoy essence sap on it uh, and get along. For the first swing, we are going to go for the resist rings. So just go for something with ES and uh, 2 resistance. Okay, and then just bench off the non channeling skills at minus seven. Make sure it is a resistance ring. Okay, this is, I, I think, um, if I'm gonna exclude Dying Sun, yeah, we kind of need the Ruby Ring uh, to cover the remaining fire resistance. All right, or if you want, if you want, you can just get Topaz Ring and then, um, oh no, actually, Topaz can't do it. Right, Topaz can't do it. Yes, Topaz can't do it. Sorry, so you need Ruby Ring. Um, the second ring is going to be the attribute ring. Basically, you just need strength dex and uh, energy shield. And then just have the bench craft of non challenging skills at minus 7 to total mana cost. For the belt, this is going to be slightly different. Okay, You will need a shaper or a crusader belt. Any one of them. As long as you have the cooldown recovery rate. And make sure it has 14%. All right? If it's below 14%, then it is as good as having no cooldown recovery rate. 14 is the next threshold that you are going to encounter before you can reach the next break point of all the trigger rates. Alright, um, and then just benchcraft, strength and dex again. It doesn't matter which belt you are using, it doesn't have to be chain belt, uh, you can use any belt. Alright, and then for the flask, we're going to go with quick silver flask. Okay, uh, no more attack speed, so change to movement speed. Granite flask for more armor. Amethyst Flask for more Chaos Resist. Um, if you do not want Amethyst Flask, you can use Sulfur. I think it's no problem. Uh, just make sure that you have the Reduce Effect of Curses on you so you are nearly immune to uh, Curse, okay? Uh, at this point, if you have the Flask at 50% and uh, Soul of Yugu, you have 80% Reduced Effect of Curses. Diamond Flask. So this one will not be um, Crit Strike Chance. You're going to have Spell Damage Leech as Energy Shield during Flask Effect. And the last one just have Dying Sun, okay? So Dying Sun, at this point of time, it, sh it usually should not be super expensive. But um, I, I wouldn't say it costs one Exot or so or so, okay? Uh, one Exot was previously, so it probably will not cost one Divine or so. Much lesser maybe in Chaos 30, 40 or the most 50. Right, so it is kind of quite affordable and you can see if I do not take this, we reduce like, what, 2 million damage? That is really a lot. That is really a lot, okay. Now, jewels. So, we need one jewel. This is kind of mandatory, which is the Hatred Reservation Cluster Jewel. Uh, it is the Increased Mana Reservation Efficiency Jewel actually, but just that you need to roll Spiteful Presence on it so that Hatred has 50% Increased Mana Reservation. Okay, um, next we're going to have Militant Fate. Militant Fate is over here, but 
Likewise, because of the changes to Divine Orb, I think it is really, really, really hard to get the perfect militant fit. All right. So what I am going to do now, right, is basically I am just going to take two of them. Okay. Um, should I show here? Yeah. So you can see the first one is uh converted by High Templar Dominus. This is mandatory. You definitely need this. Otherwise, I do not know why you use Militant Fate. It basically gives us access to Inner Conviction, which has 3% more spell damage per power charge. Alright. And the next one is... We are going to aim for the 1% in increased effect of non-cursed auras per 10 devotion. Alright. I deem this as the better option rather than elemental resistance because we are going to use elements of purity, right? Purity elements, sorry. So technically, with this effect... It's going to increase the um, elemental resistance of the uh, aura as well. Okay, so uh, it's kind of like the better option. It not only gives us more armor, it gives us more damage as well. Gives us more ES from discipline, so on and so forth. Alright, and then we need to have one anti-corrupted blood jewel, which is going to be socketed right here. Alright, um, you don't need to have the crit strike multiplier. You don't need to have the maximum ES. Uh, you can actually get anything you want, just not attack speed and make sure that Corrupted Blood cannot be inflicted on you, it's on the jewel. Alright, next is Unnatural Instinct. Okay, this is probably the most expensive item in this mid budget, alright. Um, I will say as long as you have currency, no, as long as when you are transiting from low budget to mid budget, this is your number one priority to buy, okay. As you go further down into the league, as the days goes by, Unnatural Instinct is going to be super goddamn expensive. Okay, I kid you not, this is definitely uh, going to happen. It happens every single league, alright? And no doubt, probably it's going to be uh, the same situation uh, again. Um, previously, it cost about 3 or 2 exot at the start. Alright, and then it rose all the way until 10 exot. Alright, that's how quickly it rose. Um, now this round with the changes to exot and divine orb, probably it will cause divine orbs. But uh, yes, basically what I'm trying to tell you is just take note. As long as you have currency to buy your first natural instinct, unnatural instinct, please buy it. Alright, do not hesitate. Do not wait. Just buy it. Alright, just buy it. Trust me. Okay, and the next one will be replicas conqueror efficiency. Yeah, uh, um, basically same as your low budget. You can just reuse them. Um, for the nose, it is the same. Okay, it is the same. Oh wait, uh, yeah, yeah, it is the same as the low budget. All right, there is some slight difference for the high budget, and I'll explain it later. So, there you go. If you see all these mods, um, just reroll them. You can just copy this into your search bar, and it will highlight all of the mods that you are unable to do. Alright, so important things to take note for the mid budget. Um, how much increased attack speed do you need? We total we need um forty one percent increased attack speed to reach as near as seven point five seven APS. Um, twelve percent on our first cosplay because the high budget is also using twelve percent, and then forty one percent on the skill tree. Just see the POB um here. Basically, it's on the unnatural instinct area. Okay, um, twenty percent from onslaught, and there you go. This mid budget build is really really very straightforward okay how much cooldown recovery rate do you need um we need a minimum of 14 percent increased cooldown recovery rate and that can be from your belt like i mentioned previously either the shaper or the crusader one is fine just make sure it has 14 percent okay right. and finally the last one is the high budget variant um this is the one that I've been talking about. Um, it is different from the Ice Nova, okay? So you have to pay very close attention if you want to play the Ice Spear variant instead. You can see on a high level glance, right? Um, just at a glance, we have about 4.6k ES, okay? So this is one of the major difference. It has basically dropped in energy shield. Previously, I used to have about, about 5,000 plus. But because of the changes to the uh, skill tree, I really, really cannot find a space to slot them in. Alright, uh, we used to take the energy from within over here and just take the full 4 node and this is going to give us tons of energy shield. But uh, with the changes, I will need to have like a small cluster now and I also need 
to have the increased critical strike chance medium cluster jewel i kind of think it is mandatory at this point um otherwise our crit chance is really really not very high so that's why i included in and from that conclusion i felt that i have this is the only one that i can give up left all right i have tested i have actually tested this build in uh standard and it is really well okay it is better it is uh it's going to perform much better previously i did not take this note uh so thief um even though i'm running determination and i just realized that this soul thief actually gives you a lot of sustainability on your maps all right do not underestimate this recover two percent when you encounter packs of mobs like in a very juicy maps when you see one herd of monsters right it's probably going to have about 20 plus monster and you kill them all that is like 40 percent of es you straight away get by killing all of them okay so that's why it, it helps you kind of like sustain with the additional tankiness on your um armor and physical damage reduction this is really good okay um so yes the dps is 31 million all right do not get shot like i mentioned before ice spear is a bossing build it is a single target uh damage dealer build and that is why the dps is so high okay um First of all, I want to say, based on my previous version, the damage has dropped um, about maybe 3-4M. Okay, 3-4M, but it is still not the worst, okay? Um, if we were to fight in normal maps, this is the highest we can get. If we were to fight Cyrus, this is the DPS we are going to use against him. So you can see, right, we are probably just going to melt him in seconds. Like I mentioned in one of my videos, how much DPS do you actually need? For Cyrus, it's just 3 to 5 M. You are good to go, but this is 50 million. You're going to melt him. That's why I say this is a bossing build. Okay. Um, next is if you're going to fight Uber Cyrus, you're going to have 4.7 million DPS. And actually, this is more than enough. Okay. This is definitely more than enough if you like to fight uh, Uber bosses, Uber Cyrus, Uber Eater of War, um, Uber Shaper. Basically, you need to know their mechanics. I don't expect you to like tank everything. All right, you're still going to have like 68% uh, physical damage reduction with the resistance, but at times you are still going to die from his hits. Like, you cannot tank his laser beams and stuff like that. Okay, no way. Definitely no. Okay, and uh, the skill tree is all here, same, uh, level 80, level 90, level 100, because level 80 is the lowest you can play this build. If you, if this is your second character, then this is the way to go. Um, skill gems. Okay, skill gems, uh, we are going to swap out the increased critical strikes with awaken added cold damage this time. Okay, this is going to give us a lot more damage then um then increase critical damage okay do take note um if there's any changes i will update it in the pob and i will let you guys know on discord otherwise um do take note of the various variant of the jewels as well inspiration you need diversion okay uh why is it ice nova again my bad let me just change this a quick one um yes so if you can see Ice Spear actually costs 10 mana. If I do not have Diversion, it's going to cost me 16 mana. That's a lot of difference. Alright. Um, Cosplay Trigger. The first one will be Creeping Frost, Frost Bomb, Arcane Surge. I think this is the same. Um, our Aura, we are going to go with Determination. Heavy at level 21. Purity Elements, go for the Anomalous type. I prefer this because... Uh, with Anomalous, I can cap my resistance really, really very easily, alright? And then I can focus on any of uh, the rings. I do not need to specifically, maybe let's say, have a Ruby Ring or stuff like that. I, I really do not need. Um, eventually, when you buy your items, do take note of your resistance. When you are capped, some of the stuffs you do not need to include in, okay? Um, next will be Defiance Banner 21, 20, uh, Summon Skater Bots, Bone Chill, Hatred, they are all 21, you do not need the quality. Vortex, um, go for 20, 20 and then Awaken Hex Touch with Frostbite and Elemental Weakness at 21, 20, both of them. 
Okay, uh, for the cast when damage taken, it's time to upgrade them. Uh, get the anomalous version. So the anomalous version will make your molten shell last longer. And the anomalous molten shell basically, you can take five percent additional damage equal to your armor, which means we are going to take about five k. Uh, no, molten shell basically can take five k more damage. All right. 1k more damage that adds up to 5k. What am I talking about? Alright. Um, pardon me. And then precision at level 21. Uh, Hero Eyes 21, 20. Okay. Um, so nothing really much special about here. And now let's go on to the items. The Cosprey and the uh, Prism Garden is the same. Just that for the Cosprey, because of the changes to Harvest, right, I do not know if this uh harvest enchantment is still there okay if it's not there then uh don't bother increasing the quality of this uh cosplay if it's still there then please do it it's gonna add a uh, small amount of damage but every small amount every small amount of damage increment is gonna add a lot all right helmet uh plus one power charge and nearby enemies have minus nine to cold resistance um, this is, oh wait, sorry, I have, I need to change something. Oh wait, that means actually we have a lot more damage. I forget to change this. Uh, it fires an additional projectile, alright, please take note of this. The enchantment is wrong. Oh, so we actually have 35 MDPS, my bad, my bad. Um, yes, I just noticed this now. Um, so enchantment, ice spear fires an additional projectile, get this, um, as your last thing all right after you finish the whole entire build uh the next currency to spend on is basically on your enchantment we're going to use the plus one power charge and the near my enemies have minus nine to cohesion this is basically your warlord and your redeemer um how do you craft this i previously have made many many times on the videos how you actually combine with awakeners up on this um i do have this on my builds okay so i am just gonna show you a quick one right uh no not here all right this one okay so just look at row 23 to 27 why did it shift for me all right um over here i did show you in words how to do it all right so make sure one of them is a blizzard crown um, all of them must only have one influence of that particular modifier on the helmet. So you can only have plus one power charge if it's a warlord, and then you can only have the minus nine to cold resist if it is the ready mirror mod. Okay. Um, like I mentioned, because if there's two influence modifier, it will not work because the awakeners op will take one of them at random, and it might choose the other one instead. And if you accidentally do it, then good luck, have fun. You probably have to buy another one. Okay, um, how to fuse them? It is literally on here. Okay, literally just follow step by step. You will not screw up. Please. <laughs> I have people that screw this up even though they read this. I do not know why. I will not name who it is, but please read carefully. Okay, I am not going to... Um, I, I cannot afford to help so many of you guys again and again. I'm basically giving you... This helmet for free if you screw it up. Okay. Um, Alright. Let's just go on. Um, so this is how you craft your helmet. And the body armor chevron's wrapping. It is the same. Alright. Gloves. We're going to go with the incursion chill gloves. Alright. The only difference between the ice and ice nova is uh, in the Eater of World uh, modifier. The implicit. Uh, we're gonna have projectile pierce the additional target, all right, and then just bench craft chop percent attack speed, and you are good to go with just ES and co resist. Boots we are gonna have the CDR tearing boots, which is the shaper and the hunter, same as how you create the helmet. Um, just use the awakeners of and find two of the items and just combine them together, all right. Otherwise, you can just buy the item straight by itself, it will probably cost more, but. If you do not like the hassle of doing it yourself, then you can just buy the final product straight away. Amulet, um, allocate uh, essence set, annoy essence set, and for the quality, it really depends up to personal preference. 
I prefer 25% of maximum life converted to energy shield with the defense quality. Some of you might change to the uh, chaos resistance one. Some of you might really need the three attribute so um, you can change to the attribute quality. Oh, sorry. Um, if you use the attribute quality, it will be from 16 to 19. So only plus three. Okay, only plus three. And next is for the ring. Um, go for the attribute ring. Same, you need a ruby one. And you need to have 55 strength and 36 dex uh, minimum. Okay, this is really quite a big step. But um, this is a high budget. I assume you have the budget to actually buy this. This is not even an influence item. Right, it's just a raw attribute plus ES and an empty prefix slot ring. Okay, um, next will be another set of attribute ring because it is so hard to fulfill the attributes for this build. That's why we need another attribute ring, but this time on the unset ring. Okay, so basically what you need is just 40 decks and then... Um, just yes, and then Benchcraft non channeling skills have minus 7 total mana cost. It's minus 8 over here because I have the life and mana modifier on it. Okay, you can change to any quality you want. For the belt, like I mentioned, you just need a CDR, energy shield, and we also still need strength on this. Okay, this belt is designed this way because if there is any um, any time that you want to play with a headhunter, it is going to be much easier to change. Okay, and for the flask quicksilver, um, the quicksilver is gonna be slightly different this time. Okay, I am going to remove movement speed, and I'm gonna include critical strike chance during flask effect. Why? Is because if I don't have this crit strike chance, it's gonna go like um, the crit strike chance is actually, uh, I would say is decent. Ninety three point four four percent is decent, but it is not the best. Okay, there will still be times that you will not crit, but uh, I wouldn't fret a lot. It is actually good and more than enough. Okay, and then uh, Granite Flask for the increased armor. Amber this Flask for uh, reduced effect occurs on you. And then Doctor's Flask uh, with the spell damage on Leech. And then lastly, Dying Flask. Uh, Dying Sun, sorry. Dying Sun for the additional projectiles. Okay. And last but not least, our jewels. Um, I'm just going to use the skill tree instead. Okay, we are going to have two cold damage cluster jewel. Okay, uh, blanketed snow, prismatic heart, and widespread destruction. Um, likewise, again, I'm going to mention one more time. Uh, prismatic heart and widespread destruction is kind of mandatory. The only thing you can change is blanketed snow. All right, you can change it to blast freeze. Look at my DPS now. It's thirty four point nine seven six million. If I'm going to change to this, my DPS is going to drop by one million. So. Technically, really not a lot of difference. The blanketed snow is aiming more towards bossing. All right, when you have when the bosses have more elemental resistance, you probably need that more. Okay, I'm gonna change back to blanketed snow. Um, I will say the cost wise difference. It is also a lot. Okay, it is also really a lot. So take note of that. Medium cluster jewel. We're gonna go with the projectile one. Um, oops. Sorry, this is not AoE. Let me just do a quick change. Yes, this is the projectile damage cluster, all right? Pro oops, sorry, projectile damage cluster. Don't mind me. Uh, there's a lot of things to change. I'm rushing all these builds out as well for you guys to actually have a look at them first. All right, and yes, so projectile damage cluster jewel, what we need is repeater and eye to eye. Uh, this is where we actually get our attack speed from, and that's why we can easily reach 10.09 without all the jewels having attack speed. Okay, so the jewels on both sides is just a double line crit multiplier plus yes. If you feel you do not need the energy shield, then you can go for a three line crit strike multiplier jewel. Okay, on the other side, also same, we are going to have the cold damage cluster, but on one side, we are going to have a critical medium cluster jewel, okay? So this one, we're just going to have quick get away, uh, which is going to increase our attack speed. And then lastly, we're just going to slot a anti corrupted blood uh, jewel over here. You can have any of the modifiers you want on it, but I guess the best is probably just two crit line or one crit line with one ES. It's fine. 
and on the right we are going to have the hatred reservation cluster okay all right so let's see what else am i missing um core damage cluster yes yeah, so militant fate on the left it is the same just use back the same one watcher's eye just go for the hatred with 1.7% to critical strike chance while affected by hatred and then the second option is actually very expensive and not mandatory but um, I would it would seem that actually the one that has the additional physical damage reduction while affected by determination might be slightly cheaper so you can look out for that uh, it's going to give you a lot more survivability all right uh, unnatural instinct we already have them from the medium budget so just bring them over and then lastly replicas conqueror efficiency all right for the notes right please take note this is a lot different um no not really a lot of different this is different from the low and the mid budget i do not have the elemental mastery that has uh reduced ele reflect elemental damage taken so which means you cannot do maps that has reflect damage all right you have to take note of this there is really really no space to squeeze in for this all right you can squeeze this in from level 95 to 100 but for my level 95 to 100 i basically put a thread of hope here so i can take uh hard eyes to penetrate more resistance and then just slightly more yes we're gonna reach 5000 mark at this point all right so if you do not want this um, you can just take the uh, divine judgment and then just allocate the reduced reflected elemental damage and you will be immune to reflect damage just take note of that um, otherwise the rest of the mods that you can't do is more or less the same okay and let's get over with the high budget important things to take note how much increased attack speed do you need uh, we need a total of 71% increased attack speed to reach 10.09. I am sorry. Let me um, ignore this. This is 10.09. It's supposed to be 10.09. 12% um, on our first cosplay. And then 12% on our glove. This is the benchcraft. 21% on our media cluster jewel. Basically double repeater and one quick getaway. 21% from the skill tree. Um, basically this is from our unnatural instinct. And then 20% 20 20 from onslaught. Right, so this is going to give us a total of 71%, not including the cost rate. Okay, next is, how much cooldown recovery rate do you need? We need a minimum of 52% increased cooldown recovery rate. So 31% is going to be from our Awakened Cast on Critical Strike, 11% from your cooldown recovery boots, and then 11% from your cooldown recovery belt. Right, so um, this is going to add up to 53%. What I'm trying to say here is just one of them, any one of them, either the boost or the belt, can be at 10%. Okay, so just take note of that. And yes, this is the important things you need to take note for the high budget. Okay, there is an additional thing for this. So for those of you that really likes to map with Ice Spear for some reason, and you want to go on to the Headhunter, all right, it is possible. All right, uh, just change the item set to the headhunter. Basically, what you have changed is the belt, okay? And then the boots is going to be the elevated cooldown recovery tailwind boots, where you need to have. Um, sorry, this is not. Wait, where is it? Boots. Where are you? All right, this is the boots. You do not need to have twenty percent. You just need to have eighteen percent, okay? With 18%, right, you have, uh, okay, you need to remove this as well. Let me just remove this to show you. Enable, enable, yup. Wait, that's, that's actually bad. Hmm. Okay, wait. Uh, okay, so basically you need level 6 Awakened Cast on Critical Strike. Okay, just take note of that. Um, ah, uh, no, this is not correct as well. Um, or right, am I putting that aside? I will figure it out later. Um, why do you need level six? Because it's gonna give you thirty four percent increased cooldown recovery rate. As you can see, there it's a bit small, but just go into the PUB and see. And with these boots, right? Where is it? Um, here. Okay, with these boots, uh, eighteen percent increased cooldown recovery rate. You basically have fifty two percent cooldown recovery rate. Okay, and this is going to give us the uh the sufficient cooldown recovery rate to actually uh perform 
properly. Even though sometimes when you get the buff, you might spin too fast or too much. Uh, I will still say not every time you actually will encounter that. And that is why we still want the optimal trigger rate. Alright, I am not sure why this is like that. Why is it? Oh, it's Ice Nova. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm supposed to change this. Okay, I'm supposed to change this. I'll change this and update the POB. Alright, it, it hang a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to remove this back. Um, yep, it was actually Ice Nova, so my bad. Okay, so yes, uh, I will update it and then update on the POB. Um, yep, that's it. And last but not least, I am going to show you this. Um, I spear. I will update the POB like I mentioned. The links are not available yet. I will do it before leak start, and of course the link to the video guide if you want. Um, just take note the links will probably be something like this, where you just need to click the trade market link and just uh, it will basically pop you to the to the page. Okay, so let's just say unnatural instinct. Let me show you. The only problem here is because if it's going to be a new leak. You have to change this yourself, okay? Um, I don't think the trade link website actually helps you change automatically. So just do take note of this. Uh, there you can see everything has already been changed to divine now. Okay, it's quite ridiculous. Right, so I will update this and yep, if there is anything, just hop onto my Discord and ask me over there. Good luck, have fun spinning guys. Okay, that comes to the end of this video. So um, if you have any questions, do join the Discord and I will try to answer your questions. And if you like my video, do remember to hit the like and subscribe button. I will see you in the next one. Bye.